What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the same right now. I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And I am here with Carlene Anglay Cole. And um, I'm going to formally introduce her in a second. Before I do, Carlene, I always like to mention other episodes people should check out. And since this is, she's a master of direct response, some other past direct response interviews you should check out. I've, we have another one that we've done that was phenomenal. Um, but Brian Kurtz, Perry Marshall, Richard Armstrong, and um, I think there's one with Brian Kurtz, Richard Armstrong, and John Carlton, all in one. There's many more, so check them out. And Caleb O'Dowd, uh, we got to mention Caleb O'Dowd, Sam Markowitz, uh, so many more on InspiredInsider.com, so check them out. And before we get to it, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships and partnerships. And how do we do that currently? We do it by helping you run your podcast. You know, for me, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I know Carlene is the same. I am always looking to giving, you know, how to give to my best relationships. I found no better way over the past decade to profile them, their thought leadership, what they're doing on my podcast so I can learn, others can learn. And it's just been amazing. I've gone to people's weddings, Carlene. I've gone on family vacations with people who I've had on my podcast and I've become great friends with people uh, who I've had on my podcast, like yourself. Like we just form a relationship and over the years, we keep in touch, we hang out when we can uh, be in person, not COVID. So um, if you've thought about podcasting, you should. Um, and if you have questions, go to rise25.com, email us, support at rise25.com. We're happy to help. And uh, today we have Carlene Anglay Coles, one of the top copywriters, direct response marketers. She's a master at creating controls. Um, and I don't even like to say it, but um, put it in words in people's mouths. But Clayton Makey, make peace, may you rest in peace, described her as her binding brilliance rocketed her to America's top rank of A copywriters in a fraction of the time it took me in her first in your first year as a freelancer, Carlene raked in well over six figures and royalties have never looked back. And today, Carlene makes millions in royalties, creating huge multi-year controls for healthy directions, K Wood and Associates, Health Resources, True Health, Boardroom, all the other top health publishers in the country. She has the book we should check out, which I have listened to on Audible. You can get on Amazon. Author of Your Copy Sucks. You don't 60 kick butt lessons on copywriting, business, and life. She also write the, wrote the book, My Life as a 50-Year-Old Male. And white she, male. Yeah, white male. So <laughs> hold up, you know, just so people can see, a wife is a 50-Year-Old White Male. My life is a 50-plus-Year-Old White Male, How a Mixed-Race Woman Stumbled into Direct Response Copywriting and Succeeded, <laughs> number one. And number two, your copy sucks. You don't. 60 Kick Butt Lessons on Copywriting business and life. You know, I, I was watching one of your video, a couple of videos this morning and you have uh, in your bathroom, some of the covers uh, of the copy art, because what people don't realize if they listen to the last interview we've done, you write, uh, and I think you got your pool at your house uh, and you said that your, you know, was because of writing about poop, essentially. Poop money, that was my poop money. <laughs> and I, I say that because the art on the um, the book, My Life as a 50-Year-Old White Male, um, how did you come up with that? You popping out of the, the white you know, guy's I, head. I, I thought, you know, I want to write books, but, at this, but I am a direct response marketer at heart. So what kind of book am I going to write? What kind of cover? I'm going to write a book cover, have a book cover that looks like a headline and a cover that I would do in a promotion. So I, I, for this particular book, I asked one of my favorite graphic designers, Rob Davis, to design this for me. And, you know, he, he we use the same font that I would use in a direct mail promotion. So it was Rob, you know, I gave him the copy and I said, Rob, I need something great here. And Rob came up with the idea and he had me, he said, okay, Carly, I need you to take a bunch of pictures of you doing this. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He would just do that. That's all he could tell me. And I said, okay. 
And so I did those photos and then Rob sent me the, the, the draft of it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that is it. That is the cover. Um, and so that was the brilliance of Rob Davis for that one. And then for this one, same thing. Then I used another awesome uh, graphic designer, Rick Thane. And Rick came up with this cover for me. And it is the same thing. We use, we use the basic copywriting strategies and techniques that made us successful with writing kick butt you know, uh, controls for decades and said, "Let's hey, it's what I know. Let's do what I know in this medium of books. And I think it turned out really well. Tell me this. Um, what separates someone like Rob um, and, and Rick from just, okay, someone's like, well, I'm just gonna, you know, find good graphics for my book. And I'm curious, because I'm wondering why more authors don't hire someone who's really in tune with direct response. What separates them from just putting together a- Those two that Rob, Rick, and the designers that I work with, first of all, understand marketing. It's not- they, I don't, I never want to work with a designer just for the sake of design, because I mean, if I let, if I told Rob to design something beautiful for me, he would go to town. It would be something amazing, right? But he knows we are, we have a goal here. We're trying to take the copy and make the copy, you know, rise 25. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get the copy to really shine. And so a great graphic designer is not necessarily a brilliant designer. A great graphic designer knows how to enhance the copy to get to make the sale. You know, that's the goal is to make the sale. So a lot of times ugly copy will work. Um, you know, not fancy designs will work. Other times, you know, strategically designed promotions are going to work. So the, the, the thing that makes them different is they understand the marketing. They understand the point is not to be beautiful, but to be functional and to be able to deliver the results. So with a headline like my life as a 50 plus year old white male, you know, and look who wrote the book, not a 50 plus year old white male. You know, he puts the two together in this idea and you're like, bam. And it won, it won an award for best um, cover too, by the way, it won design art award. One of the two awards I won was because of the cover uh, design. So that's a Rob Davis award. Um, so that is the difference between a regular design, hiring a designer and hiring a direct response graphic designer who understands the business, understands the role of design with copy. Copy is always king, but design is his queen. How did you come up with that title? Because it is very, you know, when I heard it for the first time, when you came out with it, it's very curiosity and like i had a lot of curiosity around it um how'd you come up with it with the this we're talking about my life right the yeah. first one well let me tell you i i happened the whole a book idea it, the whole thing just happened it was crazy over at, brian kurtz was having a, a seminar and he invited me to speak at the seminar and so as i'm talking about the things that i've done and what i've worked on i kind of just i just said it out loud and put it out there you know that you know what if i ever wrote a book i already know the title it would be my life as a 50 plus year old white male, you know, because that is, that has been my market from day one of my career. That has been when we, when I was a marketing manager and we would have to, you know, rent the list, we would always segment the 50 plus year old white males. Those were our target market. And so from day one of writing copy, you know, my late twenties, I am, you know, I wasn't writing copy then I was understanding the business at that time. It was a matter of, no, we, this is who our market is. We are talking to 50 plus year old white males. So as I started to learn copy and I'm writing to this market, I am so comfortable with these. They're my people. <laughs> the 50 plus year old white male market, that's me. That's my market. I, I talk to them. I understand them. And because of that, it has made me very successful in my, in my field. But it just cracks me up because, you know, that's, that's where I live and breathe you know, when I go to work every single day. And so it was a no brainer that that will be the title. And then we added the subtitle, how a mixed race woman um, stumbled into direct response copywriting and succeeded just to add even more intrigue going, okay, what is going on here? You know, uh, with this the picture and this, and this title. And, but it actually is just my life. You know, the 50 plus year old white male has played such a tremendous role 
in my life, even in my birth. My dad was 50 plus year old white male <laughs> when I was born. So, I mean, it just like, what? So as I was writing the book, I was like, wow, man, there's a lot of similarities going on here, you know? And so that's, that was kind of, this was a book where from the, before one word was written, I already knew what the title of it was. You know, what was popular. <laughs> yeah, totally. What was popular last time is I remember you'd pull, you have, you're very well organized. You have all of the, the different controls and packages you wrote in binders. And we were even talking if anyone touches those, they get slapped. I mean, no one's allowed to touch them except for you. And you pulled some off the shelf and we went through some mm -hmm. and, you know, in the book, um, you know, your copy sucks. You don't, there's what struck me. And I loved, um, one of the lessons, which is you went around, it was about mentors kind of in relationships and how you went around and you, you know, thank your relationships and you spent a day and you went in person and you had lunch with people and you just thanked them. Uh, and so I wanted to do a couple things, a package that you were mentored. And then on the, the other end of things, pull a package off your shelf of uh, someone that you mentored. Um, and I didn't want you to tell me what you pulled off, but um, you pulled something off. So let's do the first one, which is a promotion that you were mentored. So you asked me, you know, if you right now, if you if you look at my office, you see the back of my office, right? This is this is my back. All the bookshelves. Well, imagine the exact same thing up front, but instead of books or whatever, it's my binders. Okay, so I, when I look, I I'm looking at my binders all in front of me, and so I I had said that when I started off in copywriting, I thought, man, if I could just have a three inch binder. And if I could just fill that binder with promotions that I write, not necessarily win or successful, but just promotions that I write, if I can fill this three inch binder up with those promotions, I will be successful. So that is what I determined would be my level of success. If I could fill one three inch binder up with promotions, you know, copy that I've written. And so that was my goal. I started off, I had my first binder. Well, you know, moving forward now, I guess that I am now officially, I had to move from three inch binders to five inch binders. And I am now on binder number 40. Okay. So, and I, so everything I write, I, I get at least one sample of it and I put it in a sleeve. I put the date on it, who the designer was, what the name of the promotion, the client is, and that became my archive. So you ask me to do that. I'm going, well, I'm not going to jump up and grab these binders when you ask me. So I went ahead and pulled them, pulled them down in advance. Now, you don't know what they are, but I went and I found them. My first binder, like I said, was a three inch, but I did have to upgrade it to a five inch binder. So oh, this is book one, Clack Samples. Clack is Carlene Lawash Anglay Cole. That's me. Clack Samples, book one and the date. Yeah. It says this, uh, this was I have it from it should have been actually um. September 1999 to then this. So it took me from September 99 to um, uh, 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 April of 2000 to fill this first binder. Okay. You see that one. Now it takes about three months to fill my binders, but that, that took me, that was a big chunk of time to take me to fill this one. So you asked me to find one. I found yeah. the very first promotion. That and by the I, way, there's, there's coveted top direct response marketers that, want to get all of these from you. So <laughs> this will give them a taste. <laughs> I had one, I told you one person that said to me, just, you know, just name my price and you'll buy everything. You know, I have not done that yet. So this promotion, this one, oh, I'm gonna get emotional. I hope I get emotional for this. <clears throat> this, this. This was a promotion where I um, was trying to break into, I had started uh, my own business, but I wasn't writing copy. I was able to write, I was doing more um, marketing um, people were hiring me to do mail plans for them because I had a background doing all that. So they were hiring me to do marketing stuff, but I really wanted to write copy. And I did, and, you know, no one was hiring me to write copy. And then one day I got a call from a guy um, named Dave Nelson. He was a list broker that I had worked with. It was Walter Carl. And he called and he says, Carlene, I have this client who has a promotion um, and he, you know, he has a, a male potency product. And he's doing pretty well with it. And he just realized that a huge chunk of his market is African-American African -American males. 
So he had this brilliant idea that if he could find a black copywriter, black male copywriter, then maybe that writer would be have much more of a connection with the market and could write better copy and get them stronger controls. Well, Dave was like, I can't find any black male copywriters. So I said, well, I got a mixed race woman. Can you, can she, maybe she can do it. And so that's where Dave called me. He goes, you think you can do this? I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. I can do this. Absolutely. He absolutely needs to have a black copywriter in this thing, right? So I'm pushing <laughs> all kinds of race cards. I'm feeling so guilty. Um, so I'm doing this, right? I'm like, yes. So I meet with the guy and I talk myself, oh yeah, absolutely. You need to have someone who understands the market and this, you know, I'm talking all this junk and he buys it and he says, okay, fine. You can write, you know, he hires me to write a full promotion, right? And so I'm going, oh my goodness. I told my husband about it and I said, hey, I'm gonna, I may have a shot of writing for a male potency product. You know, can you help me with, you know, give me some ideas. You know, I'm thinking, well, you're a male, you're black male. So you can help me out with this, right? Oh yeah, honey, no problem, no problem. Sure, sure. You know, and so I go and I get the job and I go, okay, I say, honey, I got the job. I need you to help me with some things about what men, what problems men have with this. He's like, I don't have that problem. I can't help you. You know, so he pretty much throws me under the bus. Like, I can't help you. Get out of here, right? And he's gone. So now I start to write the promotion. Now I am competing against a white male copywriter. All right. So keep that in mind. So I go and I write a promotion to try to, to, um, to feel like I'm going to, I'm going to uh, appeal to this market. And so I write the promotion and I thought, you know, I'm going to ask Clayton because Clayton make peace. Um, as it was my mentor, I learned copywriting from him. He encouraged me to go off on my own. I'm going to ask Clayton if he will please critique the copy for me. Um, you know, because I'm, I don't, I'm scared. This is my first chance to do something huge that I want to do. And I don't know. I'm scared. Right. So I give Clayton, I said, can you please? He said, sure. No problem. So he takes the copy and then he gives it back to me and he doesn't, all he says is a few things, man. And I remember it. He's like, you write like an effing girl. All right. That was the biggest critique I got. And the effing was being me being nice about what he actually said. Right. And so he's like, you write like an effing girl. He goes, go and go, go burp, go fart, go adjust your package, you know, and come back and write this thing. You know, the package was not the package. You wanted me to adjust, you know? And so I said, you know, I got, I call him back. I'm like, you said I write like a girl. I am a girl. And now uh, he's like, yeah, but you're not writing to a girl. You're writing to a male market and you, it's all girl stuff in here. You're talking. He's like, you're not, you're not, you know, connecting with your market. And, you know, and so, I mean, he, he really like laid it on me, man. I'm like, it was, it was harsh. And he's just like, what are you doing? You know, you're writing the guys and you're saying all this little shush, you know, foo-foo kind of stuff that they can't go connect with. This thing sucks, you know? And so I'm like, <laughs> I cried, you know? And so then he goes, go back and do what you're supposed to do. You know, who are you talking to and go back? So he gave me some critiques and I went back. Can you show the outside of the envelope? Oh, so people sure, are sure, watching sure. the uh, okay. video. So it's a straight, it's a simple brown craft envelope, six by nine envelope on the outside. It has a corner card of the doctor's name, has a stamp that says extremely personal and confidential. And then it says sensitive material of a sexual nature enclosed. Yeah. I, okay? I, I geek out on the outside. So yeah, that I love okay. the outside in itself. And already, on the back, so, yeah. the back as you're opening it for men only private and confidential material enclosed. Love it. This was the promotion. This was a brown love craft um, that we did for this one. And so from there, I have a letter. I have a, um, what is this, an eight page letter. And then pretty much the uh, flyer with an order with um with the envelope. Did he uh, critique the, the outside at all? Did you get of the envelope what you have on there or not really? Did, did Clayton critique it? <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't work on that yet. He said he's not gonna look at my envelope because my letter was so bad. Got it. <laughs> he's like, get the letter right first, right? That was not like, okay. So I go back and I, I'm going to just read the first, the lead to this, right? So it starts off. This is this. The following is a true story. Can you hold up the pit? Hold it up just so I could. Yeah. So you could see there's a headline. Then there's a uh, the okay, graphic. I get it. So it says yeah. the following is a true story. It contains sensitive material of a sexual nature. Then the prehead says, take it from me. 
this all natural Viagra. Now this is 1999. This is all Viagra is huge, right? It's, it's starting to make a um, you know, it's it's big on the on the mile of pot in the minds of potency uh, market. Um, this all natural Viagra can save your sex life. Yeah, and then it says nature's remarkable secret for sizzling sexual performance after age 40 is cheaper, is safer, cheaper, and actually works better than costly sex drugs. So this is all part of my headline section, you know, setting up my, my, uh, my argument. And then it says, and this is the Clayton really, he helped me with this. I will give, he really like made me keep going back to fix this, fix this. So I got it so tight that he liked it. But it says, dear friend, they say us guys are always in one of two modes. One, having sex or two, thinking about having sex. Me, I plead guilty on both counts. Then, you know, and then I go into it. The mere thought of an, of a, of an exciting woman always made me hard. The, the curve of her hips and the breast drove me wild. You know, the thoughts of, you know, driving her crazy was like, oh, I love it. You know, so he just said, get into the mind of the male. You know, and what a is scary it? place, what? right, Carly? Very, I was I thought I would never leave. I'm like, that was I was trapped. <laughs> So this became this one it's for after I got the letter right. Once the letter made sense, then all the other pieces, supporting pieces fit in. It made sense to keep it simple on the brown craft carrier, um, you know, and just very little, less was more in this case. And then so the letter is just saying, hey, remember those days when you could just wow your woman? It can happen again. You know, and that was the message. I just kept going over, over, over and over. Again. And that was Clayton mentoring me to say, you know, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. I don't care anything about you, except you need to know how to write copy to this person you're talking to right now, who is your market. And that was such a powerful lesson um, that I learned, you know, very early in my career. And that's why I tell my, my, I tell people today, copywriting is blind. Nobody gives a squat who you are as the copywriter. Nobody cares if you have a college degree or if you didn't, you barely got out of high school, if you're black, white, orange, or purple, where you grew up, you know, nobody, nobody cares what you, you'll be successful if you can connect with your market and deliver the goods. And so that was a lesson. So that, I mean, of all things to get started with, I'm like, wow. And so we tested the promotion and it beat the pants off the control. It beat the pants. So I'm like, what? I beat, I beat the guy, you know, so I'll prove my point again. This was a, a white guy who write, was writing the control. He should know his market pretty well. I'm not, you know, but yet my, this thing ended up uh, being in control for two years. And, and then from, from this, from this version of a um, brown craft, we, we converted it to a Magalog because Magalogs were, you know, were kicking in. I'm trying to find if I can find it. Oh, here it is. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Here it is. Ugh. So we, we changed it to, after, you know, after it started to mail, then in 2000, we converted it into a, um, uh, a Magalog, like a, you know, like this. So I think it's sticky off the thing. Um, so mm. we turned that, but the copy is the same. All the copies inside. Um, we just kind of widened it out. Different layout. Mm -hmm. Yep, there it is. They say, the Savior Sex Life is right in here. So that was, so that was it. So that was where, Probably one of the most powerful experiences I had of being mentored. Um, and, you know, the fact that Clayton took the time. I mean, he wasn't, he, I wasn't, you know, he was, I wasn't paying him for this. He was doing this out of um, his kindness and generosity to, to help me get my, you know, my foot in the door. And by doing that, it gave me confidence. And again, I had such, I'm so glad he ment mentored me on something like that, which is so outside of my comfort zone. That anything else, I can write about heart and I can write about, you know, blood pressure and I can write cholesterol. That's got nothing to do with something like male potency. It's like if you can write this and, and get a winner here, you can write anything. You know, and I was like, and, I, and again, I was doing male potency with, with class and style. I wasn't getting nasty. You know, it was that. I was like, nope, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to talk it this way. And it worked. Uh, and it worked great. So, Carmen, did, he have, did he have suggestions on? You know, go back and connect. They have suggestions on connecting and or getting in the mind of, you know, what what my mind goes to is um, that Mel Gibson, What a Woman Want movie. I don't know if you saw where he gets yeah. in the bathroom, he starts putting on all the make. What did he have any suggestions or did anything help yeah. you 
get into the mind of that person or connect with? Uh, he told me to go burp out loud, fart out loud, adjust <laughs> my package, you know, scratch myself. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> and he said, remember, when he's actually, he's the one that said those things. He's like, guys, the mind of a male is on focus on two things. You know, and he kept saying over again, that's why I ended up repeating what he said as my lead. You know, it's like, you know, having sex, you know, what is it? Having sex or having more sex. And he goes, he pleads guilty to both. So uh, thinking about sex or having sex. So whatever. I'm like, okay, that's who I'm talking to. This is who I'm, you know, okay. Yeah. Well, how do I talk with them now with the, in a way that yeah. they can connect with me? Understand. Oh yeah. This guy knows what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so that Probably, was, that you was don't... it. I mean, you've gotten the inside the mind, right? And you have daughters, as do I. So Three daughters. Does inside. that disturb you? And how did you uh, coach them when they started <laughs> dating? Because you've been writing these packages. And I say it like not even joking. Like, that, that when yeah. you say that, you're like, this is on the mind of males. How did you prepare your daughters for when they were being courted? You know well, what I mean? I, I must mean, have done a pretty good job because two of my daughters are copywriters right now. <laughs> so like, I, they, like, do you have them read your package me. and warn your daughters about yeah, dating, you know I dating, have proof, my, proof the copy. I ask any questions you want. I will answer anything, you know, and it, it's just the same, the same thing as understand, you know, teaching them like, look, men think this way. Women think this way. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, whichever, the, whatever the, the planet is. Um, so it, you know, it, 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 it's very, it, it gets to be very interesting conversations. At home, all I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anything else on that? I want to go to the mentee cause you've, you know, mentored people. So, lessons learned, lessons learned when you are being mentored. Um, in my case, I, I mean, one of the fatal mistakes I made could have been a fatal mistake. Um, you have somebody who has a lot of experience and who wants to willing to teach you something. Okay. He told me I write like a girl. All right. What did I say? I am a girl. I came back at him with some lame answer, lame comment, you know? And I said, that could have been a fatal mistake because he could have said, you're right. Never mind. And walk away. Right. He could have said whatever. So the big mistake you make when you're being mentored is your, your, your need to defend yourself. You know, and so when I talk when I talk to my my copy um my copy cubs now, and if I'm give I'm, if I'm giving them crits, the first thing I say is shut your pie hole and listen, just be quiet, okay? Do not defend anything, just be quiet and listen to what is being bestowed upon you, the knowledge that is getting dropped on you right now. Shut your face, just listen. Whether you agree with it or not, it doesn't matter. This person is willing to give you extreme insight to help make you a better person. You only have so much time with this person. Do you really want to waste it defending yourself? Well, I was thinking that I did it this way because I wanted that. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So one thing I remember, I remember Clayton saying to me, and I, and, I, and I repeat this all the time, and I said, well, I did it this way because what I was trying to do was X. He goes, well, and unless you're able to go to every single prospect and personally explain what you are trying to do, then I suggest you change the copy. <laughs> so I say the same thing now. Unless you're going to go to everybody's house who's going to receive this message and say, hey, what I meant to say here was this in case you don't understand it. And unless you can do that, I suggest you go change that copy. You know, it makes it easier. So that was that's another powerful lesson. You know, mentoring, no one, mentoring is hard. It's, it's very hard. It's time consuming. It's energy consuming. Um, and so somebody willing to, to do that, to give that to you, you show appreciation by being quiet and listen to what they say. And then later on, you can go, because I can argue with Clayton later and decide, well, I decided not to do it this way. I decided to go this route. That's fine. You develop as a writer and you can make your own decisions accordingly. But in this, in that time process where you're getting the critique, be quiet. Just, Just take it quiet. in. Just be quiet. <laughs> Just in me. addition to, you know, I know Clayton um, 
really was a, a big mentor of yours. Did you have others in the direct response space? No, not to the level where I, I mean, Clay, I had the, the rare privilege of meeting Clayton Makepeace when I was a marketing manager, being becoming, you know, then I got to re, I got to see his copy. I got to quit his copy, you know, like we're passing around Clayton Makepeace copy and people say, what do you think, Carlene, about this? And I was like, you know, I didn't understand this part. You know, so I got to give feedback to Clayton on his copy, you know, and I'm a marketing manager, you know, and so that, and then from there, because he worked at Phillips, he was our number one, um, you know, a copywriter. So, and I was, I was working on one, one of the best products in the health market at the time. So he was our number one copywriter. So I got to work with him very closely and I got to see what he was doing. I got to watch what he was doing. Then we got to become friends, uh, you know, um, because he was, you know, Hey, how you doing? I could chit chat with him or whatever. And then it's like, I said, well, I'm trying to write something now. He said, Oh, anytime you need some help, let me know. So it, it kind of developed like that. And then it got to a point where I was ready to become a writer. And he was the one that said, hey, when, whenever you're ready to do this, you know, you make that jump, you let me know, you know, just give me a call after you make the jump, give me a call. And I called him. So then he then was able, he hired me and now he was training me. I was, I was like a ghostwriter for him. I would write the first draft of the copy, you know, get all of the research pulled together for him and give it to him. I did that for many years. Um, and so, and then from there, it got to a point where we became more like partners where we would split. We work on a project together and we would just split everything down the middle. And then it got to a point where I said, you know what? I'm going off on my own. You know, so it, I really have never had anyone else to that level of mentoring. Now I have had some amazing people who have served as mentors at different stages in my life, whether it's other fellow copywriters um, that, that I, you know, I know and I work with and I trust or designers. So I mean, I've had those types of people in my lives, but no one comes close to the level of mentoring that Clayton make these, um, he, I, I feel like when I write it, when I wrote a copy one time and he said, I read this and I thought I wrote it. And I'm like, that is the best compliment you could ever give me, you know? And so I took that. And then from there, I developed my style, my little crazy style that he says, he called, he's the one first called it crazy. He goes, this is some crazy writing, but it is good. And I'm like, I like it. So I took what Clayton taught me and then I kind of made it my own. And but that was years of developing, you know, to that point. So I, you have I something I, similar now. Um, and I, people can check out any information at CarleenCole.com. It's C-A-R-L-I-N-E-C-O-L-E.com. But you have something similar as a, as a program, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I have last year I launched my crazy copy system live mentoring show. Now, this was an opportunity to work with my daughter, number two, who is a copywriter and graphic designer. And the, the whole thing was, you know what? There are a lot of mentors out there, but I want to be something different. So imagine Oprah as a copywriter, you know, having a show and now teaching the copywriting live on the show. So where it's like, you get a control, you get a control, you get a control, right? You know, that's the Oprah pr approach. So, um, so I have this, I, this show that I do is once a week on Thursdays from one to three Eastern time. And I get my tribe, my crazy tribe, they join, it's a monthly uh, membership. And so you join and now I, you, you're with me, you know, you here's what I'm working on this month. You know, let me show you with the copy. Let me show you what the, what the client said to me about the copy. And then they get to actually create cover tests and I get to help them create strong cover tests. And then we test them with my clients to beat my control. And when they beat my control, I pay them. You know, $500, $1,000, $1,500, $2,500. It just depends on the project. So it's like, this is a situation where you can come with not knowing how to do anything about copywriting. I'll teach you my crazy way. I'll help you create covers tests that become samples for your portfolio. And I get it tested by my real clients. Real money is involved here. You get to see the numbers, the results come in. And then if you're a winner, bam, you win. Not only money, but you get this cool T-shirt that says, I'm on a roll. I beat Carlene's control. No, like, it's back there. So can you see back over there? It's a T-shirt right over there. Yeah, you, can't, you can't buy this anywhere. You have to earn it, right? You have to earn it. I'm telling you, my students would love I'll this. do anything for a T-shirt. They will forsake them, the winning prize for the T-shirt. <laughs> so you had a recently um, a mentee have a, a winner. You want to yeah, talk oh about that? Yeah, oh my goodness. I, Yes, I'm actually last week's show was so awesome because 
what we do, like I said, they go through the whole process. They write the copy, they see the copy turn into design. They see the design, you know, get tested. They then they get some results. And so last week's show, we had a results show and I had one, one of my students, um, Celine is her name. She's in Switzerland. And she came up, you know, we worked on their cover and I have, I have that binder for her too. So we came up with the idea. And so we tested her cover along with all of the other covers in the class. We had, we had I think, um, a total of, uh, oh, was it? I had, we had eight total, um, but I think six were tested. I'm not sure on the numbers. But anyway, of the, yeah, six were tested. And so of the six, hers beat my control. She was the only one. Hers, you know, the others came close, but hers beat. Want to see? Want to see hers? Let me show you the lead. Let's see it. All right, let's see. This is this is for a colon product. <laughs> so, if you're watching the video, there is a does. almost a big poop emoji with a smiley face holding toilet paper, and it says, "Poop, there it is." Poop, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you say it better. Yes. Now, the point about this, let me, let me li listen to the words. Count, you count, as I'm saying, okay? Poop, there it is. Clockwork, easy, flushable, safely eliminates stuck stool fast. How many words is that? 12 words. 12 words. She got $1,500 for 12 words on here because the rest is just, we have scientific proof and it's just, it's just artwork here, guaranteed to work for you or you pay nothing with the standard on all of the promotions. So this 12 words on, you know, beat, the, beat all of the other ones and became a control. So she was ecstatic because she needed writing samples. So now she can use this as her writing sample. She needs a story. Hey, I beat Carlene Anglet Coles. Um, control. That's a pretty nice story to tell, um, you know, and so it's just, it's just been kind of fun um, seeing the writers to develop that way. And so, and again, to show you, you don't have to write a ton of copy. You don't want to write a ton of copy for a headline. You want to write copy that's going to catch the attention of your market and boop, there it is, did it. So that was a cool experience. It just happened last week. And so On the inside of that, Carlene, is that the copy that you wrote for the- Everything is, yes. And from once you get inside the inside the back copy uh, back cover though that's the control um so i wrote all the that's why you know the thing is it's a cool experience because i wrote the package so i have freedom to allow other writers to play with my covers right so they can use anything inside that they see to use it as their cover test idea mm. so what they would have to say is i this is a cover test that I beat. You couldn't say that they wrote the whole package because right, you didn't do right. that, right? And they know that. It was like, no, here's a cover test that I did because guess, you know, headlines and the cover test are the most important part of the promotion anyway. You know, if you can write a strong headline, you know, that's 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 going to get you in the door. So now she can use this cover to talk about her story of, you know, I'm, I'm, she's a new writer, so, you know, she doesn't have a lot of samples. Now she's got a great sample. Put this thing on your website. I, and I told her, I will even give you a testimonial on there, you know? So you got my, you got a testimonial from me saying, yep, she kicked my butt, <laughs> you know? And I mean, is that not going to help writers go to the next level? Would you not want something like that if you were getting started? Of course. So that's what I'm offering. What's on the back? Uh, did they try and test the back or? Well, we do the back cover. Actually, the back is usually a, a previous control. Got it. Um, you know, it was kind of fatiguing control. So in this case, it was just do it eat, poop, repeat, you know? So she saw that. I mean, I get no pain, no days. strain, no <laughs> pain, no strain, no bust in a vein. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she took that approach and said, well, just do it's going to be the back. I'm going to go to the front and go poop. There it is. And that was, uh, that was, I had some great covers. I had bye bye turdy as a cover. Um, I had poop like a kid again. Um, can't remember the rest of them. It was some different ones, but that they all submitted, we tested them. They all did pretty well, but this one was the kick. Button. I remember, you know, when you were, I think I was at that um, meeting with at Brian Kurtz when you were talking and yes. one of your methods what is to listen to music. I mean, all those are plays oh, yeah. off of music. You as inspiration, listen to music as you're writing your copy, right? 
Yeah, well, yeah, but, you know, I was working on a pain promotion one time. I was kind of stuck on what to write about. Carly Simon, you know, haven't got time for the pain. Started playing it. And all of a sudden I'm using like, like you know, the concept, you know, of what she's saying. And I'm like, let me, let me put these as subheads and see what happens, you know? And so, cause music is nothing but a story, you know, just a short, you know, two minute story. So I thought, let me see what happens if I do something like that. And so from there, it just kind of morphed into becoming a, my promotion. But a lot of times, yeah, you turn some music on um, to help you get started. I mean, I don't do it all the time. I use it to kind of help me kind of get, uh, to reboot myself to help me just get inspiration and motivated, um, you know, to when I'm stuck on something. Yeah, absolutely. Music, I mean, and listen to what, the, what listen to the words, listen to the cadence. People don't realize when you are writing a, a sales promotion, there's a beat to your promotion. You gotta, you know, there's a rhythm. And so that's why if you say something, it's like, eh, this doesn't sound right. It's just like a thud. It's like, cause you're off beat. You're off, so go back and take out a word or make another word longer or something. And then when you're reading your copy, there needs to be a little rhythm, whatever the rhythm is, whether you want to make a country Western rhythm or blues, rhythm, but put some rhythm into the word so that it comes out very easily when, you, when you're, you know, you're speaking the words. And the other thing is also, you know, write, you know, don't write copy, you talk copy, you know, you write, you know, talk your copy out loud, hear what you're saying and what doesn't sound right, because we are talking conversation in print here. This is strictly, you know, a conversation you're having with your market. I wanted to talk about your copy sucks. You don't. Okay. The 60 kick butt lessons. And if you want to hold that up. Yeah. And, um, just start off with, um, I, I noticed, you know, when I read the book lesson 34, lesson 34, which is on the front cover of the book, that is the, your copy sucks. You don't theme. I love this lesson because it, when I wrote this section, it really helped me see a lot more meaning to it. So I just say, when I, before, I, my, with my crazy copy system live mentoring show, we do, in addition to um, helping them write a uh, cover test, I also do copy critiques for them. So if they are, because they're, they're the writers on different scales. There's, some of them are experienced writers, some are just beginning. So if they have copy, they want to turn into a client. When we look at it first, we'll do, I'll do copy critiques. That's part of the membership, right? So, but, but, but I learned my copy critiques with Clayton Makepeace. And as I told you, he could be a little harsh, right? So before um, we would start the copy critique process, I would tell everyone, okay, I want everyone to repeat after me. You know, you're, you're awesome. You're amazing. Your copy sucks. You don't, okay? Because as writers, you know, we, we, our words are our babies. You know, we can take it personal. So it's like, okay, I'm going to go. I may be attacking your copy but I'm not attacking you. I'm never attacking you as a person. But my job right now is I'm not your friend. I'm not your mother. I am your, um, your, you know, I'm your critique. I'm critiquing your copy for you. So I'm going to look for holes, to, you know, that you can fill them and make your copy stronger. So we set that up by saying, remember, your copy sucks. You don't. Okay. So we're cool here. Then I go in, I tear into the copy and whatnot. But then as I was writing the book, I just kind of realized that the mantra, your copy sucks, you don't, is really more also, it, it fits perfectly for life. Uh, you know, bad things happen. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. You know, your kids screw up in school. It doesn't mean you're a bad parent. You know, it's just stuff happens and you got how you roll with it is going to determine if you're going to have a successful or unsuccessful life. So I just thought about that. I was like, wow, that's kind of a two-edged sword here because it's not, it's about copywriting, but it's also about life. And this is what this book is about. It's, it's 60 lessons about copywriting, business, and life. So all of these lessons will tie into each other in some form because that, I think those lessons, I, I could give you 300 lessons, but I narrowed it down to 60. And I thought this is what I want to be able to share because whether you're a copywriter, a businessman, or just living your life, you can learn from these lessons. I don't remember, Carlene, which, yeah, thank you for that because it's it's good to, preface the conversation with that, you know, I say this with love, but you know, you want people to take the feedback in and not get defensive, et cetera. Um, I don't remember which lesson it was, but it was the one where you basically went around to mentors, friends, family to thank them. And one of the stories is you uh, went to Beverly Hills. Yes, this was a um, lesson. I got to find out what it was, but lesson it was, um, thank your mentors. Um, and it was, this was 11 years ago when I uh, had decided to do this. I said, for the whole year, I'm going to, I made a list of everyone, 
that I thought was had a pivotal or had an important role in my life, whether in my childhood, my adulthood, but, you know, whatever the case may be, someone I thought helped me in some way that I'm extremely appreciative for. And so I made that list and I decided that um, um, in January, I was going to go visit my friend Sherry and she and I went to college together at the University of Southern California. And she's probably, the, she's the only person I, I keep, I even keep up with after, you know, my college years. And so she was just a very, her, she and her family just took me in. I moved, I'm 18 years old, living 3,000 miles away from home. And, you know, I meet Sherry and her family just absorbed me. Um, and I really appreciate that. So I wanted to go and say, you know, she knows I love her. They know I love, I, I love them, but I wanted to make the extra effort of flying out to LA, um, Pasadena to, to, to let them know, I, I care for you guys. Thank you to Sherry out to we were, hang out for the weekend. Um, we we're going to go have a great time. Well, I, that's what I was going to do every year. I went through the whole year of picking different people, whether, you know, I flew out to California, I flew out to Vegas. Um, I was in just all different parts on the West, East Coast, whatever. And I just made that a year of showing appreciation to my mentors. Um, but I thought I was, I thought I was giving um, as far as, you know, giving up my time and, and thanking them and everything else. But that experience ended up being so much more of me still getting mentoring, um, you know, because that was when I was with Sherry, what happened um, that day, I was supposed to go meet with a client on that Friday. And uh, then I was going to hang out with Sherry Saturday and Sunday and fly back home Sunday night. Well, my client, something happened and he had to cancel the meeting on Friday. So I said, okay, fine. So I called Sherry and said, hey, listen, my, my client canceled. So I'm at the hotel. I'll just, I'm here until whatever. She goes, well, why don't you come to work with me? And I said, um, okay, all right, fine. Well, Sherry is the uh, personal assistant for Sydney Poitier. And so, Sherry invites me to go to work with her, which was in Sydney Poitier's house, where she works in Beverly Hills. So I'm going with her and I'm driving around Beverly Hills. I'm going through it. I go in his house. I'm there the whole day. Sherry's on the phone. I just, you know, copywriters, hey, we can work anywhere, right? I just found a corner, parked myself in a corner. I met the staff. I met, I met his wife. I met his daughter. I mean, I was like, this is so crazy. I can't believe this is happening, right? So when Sherry's on the phone, she's talking to people, Tyler, Tyler Perry calls, Kathleen Kennedy calls, um, Oprah calls. I mean, she's having these conversations. I'm right here going, give me that phone. I want to talk, I want to talk, you know? <laughs> and she's like, he didn't even swat at me, like, just get me. Oh, I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, we're just like acting like silly kids that we did, like we always do. Um, so had the best time ever. And then she said, you know, she thought Mr. Poitier was going to be busy. I said, it's okay. I'm looking around his room. I'm seeing Oscars. I'm seeing all kinds of awards. I'm seeing famous people with him. All I'm like, this is crazy. Right. And so I ended up um, working. And then one, then Sherry says, uh, Carlene. And I'm like, yeah, hold on one second. She says, Carlene. And I look up and there's Mr. Poitier standing right there. And he was there. He did not just say, hello, how are you? Goodbye. No. He stood there. We had a nice, maybe 35, 40 minute conversation. And he's asking me how Sherry and I were friends. And he's asking me, um, you know, how, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? And what, you know, how's my family? And I just, first thing I could say to him, I, I guess that I just blurted out, my mother loves you. My mother loves you. And then I said, can I please call her and tell her? And so I'm calling my mom on the cell phone right there. And from, mom, mom, you won't believe this, right? And he's just, you know, just but listen, most gracious person. And he in turn, even though it was 40 minute conversation, I had one of the most amazing mentoring opportunities from him, you know, with him giving me, you know, some guidance and direction and, you know, just, oh my goodness. So again, I'm, whenever you think you're doing something with somebody else, you know, most of the time you get back so much more, you know, in return. So that was just one of the amazing experiences I had that year. Like that year of sort of showing my mentors that I really, talk, I really, you know, care about them. And this so happened, look, Denis Poitier passes away a few days ago. So it makes it even more special. Now I have a picture. If you look back here, it's my finger. Hold on, let's see. Uh, right there. Oh, I do see, see that. Yeah. That's yeah. me and Denis Poitier. Wow. He took a picture with me right then and there um, with that picture. So that's yep. amazing. I've had that there for 10, 11 years now. You know, like a great uh, direct response marketer, copywriter for your book, um, you have bonuses, gifts, if someone gets your book. And 
again, I don't know a lot of people when they have a book, they don't necessarily have all these bonuses and gifts. Talk about how, why you decided on those and what are some of the things when you buy, you know, your copy sucks, you don't. Well, when, you know, before even writing the book, I said, okay, I got it. What am I going to give that's going to be awesome for this book? Um, make it really cool because this book really, I'm sharing a lot of lessons that I've learned. I'm at a stage right now in my life where, you know, I, I enjoy seeing people grow and it, there's no competition. I'm not worried about, oh, you're going to steal my secrets and now I won't have clients. You know, it's like, it's not there. So I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to just go ahead and just spoil people is what I'm going to do and spoil you. So in this, in this particular book, I give you um, my sample, samples of my swipe file. Um, you, get, you get samples of, this, of, of my actual promotions. You can, as PDFs, I give you, uh, I let you see what copy critiques are like, how I do copy critiques, not one, not two, but three times. I show you how I'm critiquing copy that you get to look over my shoulder and then help you to be able to see the mistakes that most writers make. So I put together this whole bundle where you've got, you know, you've got um, swipe files, you've got the... Um, the copy critique, and then my daughter, number two, Tierra, and I did an amazing interview. I call it a mother-daughter smackdown, where I try to help, you know, you unleash your inner hustle. So I put all that together in a bundle, and it's worth $1,799. So $1,799. And I said, okay, you can have all of this free when you purchase my book. And it could be a $9.99 Kindle book, you know, or it could be an audio book. It could be a paperback. Harvard. I don't care. You buy the book. You're, you're telling me you want to know more about me or you, you know, you like me and you want to understand what I do. I'm saying you do that. I'm going to help you, boo. I'm going to give you a whole lot more than you think, you know? And, and so that's the gift that you get when you purchase the book. Um, you will have access to that $1,799, total 14 uh, free gifts um, that to total that amount that you get for free, you know? And I'm, do why am I doing it? Because I want to, that's all. Because I want to. And so I can. people can get the book. They can go to Amazon, Audible, any other place. You can go to my there... website. You can go to carlinecole.com. Do you want to see more about the book on my website? You go there. A book will pop up at you immediately. Um, if you want to go to Amazon and order straight, that's fine. It's on Audible. Yep. It's on, you know, Kobo. It's on whatever. Uh, Barnes and Noble. It's, it's uh, you know, it's out there. It's online. And so available. once they buy it, then how do they get the swipe Once and the they buy it they will get access to the link oh gotcha um, yeah they'll get a link that an access to the link that will um allow them to download the, the book immediately you know it's the link the access to the is in the book that you're going to get it so you, once you read the book you'll see how to get it um and it's pretty cool i think you'll it's i mean eighteen hundred dollars worth of stuff for a ten dollar you know ebook really come on I'm a marketer. Oh, that's a no brainer, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that, that, that swipe, I would probably argue it's, it's worth more than $1,800 because it's made a hell of a lot more money than, than oh, that. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, but it's just, you know what I, I picked in the first book, I gave away $950 worth of my swipe file and the first book. And that worked out. That was so great. People were like this. I can't believe it. So I thought, well, I gotta make the next one even better. So I gave different swipe files and then I added the copy critique element and then the, the, the interview and said, okay, here's a different bundle here that you can get with this book. So if you've got both books for $20, you're getting about $2,800 worth of value. What's an example, Carlene, of one of the swipes in, in this one that uh, for the, your copy um, well, sucks? Okay, I have, I have um, uh, on this one, I have, let's say, let's say for the health market, I have uh, my, my control for inflammation. I have a weight, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to remember all the ones I have. I'm getting confused with the two, but you got blood pressure, inflammation, heart related. Um, you've got energy. Um, I can't remember all the rest. Sorry. But, no, um, but good. that's what, you know, I just went, I, I went and no. said, this is my all-star swipe files. I just said, okay, which ones of these promotions may be the most money. And I looked at, and it's in the health market. And so I said, all right, well, these are the ones we're going to get them. There you go. There Love you go. Mm -hmm. um, Carlene, this is amazing. Always a pleasure <laughs> talking to you. I want to point people towards your website. Um, you can go to carlenecole.com and check out everything she's doing. Are there any other places online that we should yeah. point people towards? Go to my YouTube channel, Carlene Cole YouTube channel. I, I, give, I have free video um, uh, train, copywriting training. 
um, se some sessions on there for you. If you got 60 seconds, I can give you some copywriting training. If you got an hour, I can give you even more. You know, so it just depends on what you want. But I, I know the people that are, that are being attracted to me, besides 50 plus year old white males, are also mothers, busy moms with kids. Um, so I wrote the book so you can run to the bathroom and read a chapter <laughs> in peace and then come back out again. Um, and so even the, the videos are, I have short videos to, to long ones to teach you how to write headlines, how to find your lead, just whatever you need as a writer, you know? So it's like, go check it out, you know? It's, it's free, you know? So I'm giving you the stuff and I'm telling you that you can use it. And it's fun. It shows you the copywriting life that I lead and how I got, a, I got to this point. I got awesome. I got the Clayton Makey's tribute on there that we did last year, had um, 18 amazing speakers come and share their Clayton experience and moments. And that's all on the website. I'm sorry, it's all on a YouTube channel that you can um, take a look at it. And it's, it's yours, you know, while it's there until I take it down, it's yours, you know, to, to watch as much as you want to. Who are some of the people that gave the tributes to, to Clayton? Um, Bob Bly, Brian Kurtz, Caleb O'Dowd, um, uh, uh, Kim Krause Schwamm, um, um, Marcella Allison, Cindy Butehorn, um, David Deutsch, uh, Lori Haller, um, um, Paris Lampropolis, Wendy Mayfeast actually spoke. I had my two daughters, Milan. To her and Tierra Cole. Tierra was my was my also helping me with the whole thing. She was my co-host. Uh hope I'm forgetting anybody. I can't um, yeah, we'll uh, take a look on YouTube, but that's yeah, I mean the who's who of some of the top yeah. direct response marketers on the planet, essentially. Yep, yep, yep. If I forgot anybody, I'm sorry, but I was off the top of my head. Those were those are the ones that popped up. You know, check okay. out that much more. Check out her, her YouTube channel. Check out CarleenCole.com. And uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Carleen. Uh, bye. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.